is here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, and Saturdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern with Jim Valley. And we got a lot to get into today. Everybody's favorite topic, Monday Night Raw. Holy smokes, a show I had to watch last night. You know, we had some good Raws and such lately. I don't know what happened on, uh... I don't know what happened last week, but SmackDown and Raw, my God. SmackDown had no wrestling. It was like 13 minutes of wrestling in a two-hour show. And granted, Raw on Monday had more than 13 hours of wrestling, but oh my God, they had so many talking segments. So many boring talking segments leading to two matches with the lamest finishes. So anyway, we'll rant about that today. But also, we've got AW Dynamite tomorrow night. We've got the lineup for that show. Lots of matches, including the first TNT title defense of Hordlow. He'll be facing Orange Cassidy. We've also got NXT 2.0 tonight with a women's title match. Mandy Rose versus Roxanne Perez and more. This coming Wednesday on Dynamite, they'll be announcing all of the information about the All Out pay-per-view, which is coming up on Sunday, September 4th. You going to be there? I'm going to be there. I'll also be talking about the uh, best moments, WWE's best moments in the SB Awards. We've got four uh, contenders here. What do you think was the best WWE moment of these? We'll read those out. And there was an issue involving the great Kali and a toll worker what happened well we'll tell you about it here on the show plus ratings and so much more if you want to text us 425-780-7566 425-780-7566 back in a moment with more observer live i actually can't wait to tear apart raw but i'll wait till the next segment i want to make sure i got a little time you want to do your, your usual show opening chuckle, Mike? No? No. Should I mention the buzz? No? Okay. Hey, Why W President. Why didn't you mention President. that before we started? I just check, noticed I we, there was a loud commercial in the background. Go ahead. I thought it might just be, uh, you know, poor production on one of the commercials. Instead, it was poor production on my show. Tony Khan announced Wardlow's first TNT Championship defense is coming up tonight, tomorrow night. What's today? Tuesday? Wednesday on AEW Dynamite. He will be facing Orange Cassidy for the TNT title. I would not expect a title change. Orange Cassidy's got a lot of big wins lately and good performances. I expect him to go in there and should have a fun match, but uh, he'll be he'll be roundly defeated, I would presume. We've also got John Moxley versus Takeshita for the AEW. Actually, it's not for the title, but if, if Takeshita wins, uh, what do they call these? A uh, contenders match? Championship contenders match? If he wins, he'll get a title shot. We've got Young Bucks versus Shane Strickland and, and uh, Keith Lee against Will Hobbs and Ricky Starks in a three-way for the tag team titles. You know, the Young Bucks put the titles on the line. Jake Hager versus Claudio Castagnoli. Serena Deeb versus Anna Jay. Uh, Luchasaurus will be in action, and Christian Cage will be cutting a promo. Chris Jericho also will be cutting a promo on the show tomorrow. So that's Wednesday night. Tonight, NXT 2.0, we've got Mandy Rose and Roxanne Perez for the NXT women's title. We have got uh, Apollo Crews, Giovanni Vinci, to see who's more athletic. And Solo Sokoa will face Von Wagner, one of my favorite uh, NXT names. So uh, that's the lineup. If I look at all these matches here, I think that uh, Wardlow should win. I think that Takeshita, he maybe should beat John Moxley. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't decided 100% yet, but uh, he gets more over every time he gets in the ring. The fans are super behind the guy. He has great matches, and I think that uh, a rare uh, victory over the champion to set up a title match, which he would then lose, I think that that might be a pretty fun idea. Young Bucks should retain. Mandy Rose should lose the title to Roxanne Perez, but I don't think that she will. 
And uh, those are my big predictions for the next couple of days. How long is Zoe Stark out for? Are you? Do you know no, no. that she she was out? It was in, November, what, no, November, December, the, January, and, February, and, March, April, May, June, July, August. Probably a month out. So, MCL injury uh, tear that happened to her. I am all for. I mean, Roxanne Perez is the future of women's wrestling there because of her age and because of her talent level already. So she's going to have a, a long lifespan there. And I would be more for putting the belt on her if she didn't win the tag titles. And I think they have a story going with that. And I like Zoe Stark a lot. And I don't know if she's a, a long-term person for them. I don't know if we'll see her on the main roster. But I thought she was very strong when she was there. She's very skilled. And I think once she comes back, she's going to make an impact on that division. So if it is only going to be August and we're only really looking at six weeks away even though i haven't been enthralled with the mandy rose title reign i can wait another six weeks if if she comes back and is the surprise and roxy keeps that uh you know money in the bank or whatever they call it the the, the futures you know championship shot in her back pocket and holds on to it for a little bit also on wednesday w is going to announce their next pay-per-view it was revealed during this week's AEW Control Center. Is that like the bump? No. What it's is like the, the AEW Control Center? Well, you remember watching Star, you know, leading to Starcade and the Great American Bash. Well, I know what a control center is, but where's the AEW Control Center? Probably YouTube? in front of a, probably in front of a green screen on YouTube with Tony Schiavone. Okay. Yes. All yeah, right. <laughs> Announcement of the company's next pay per view will be made on Dynamite this Wednesday night. Next pay-per-view will be all out. Scheduled to take place Sunday, September 4th. Dave and I will be doing a live Q&A that weekend. So if you're making plans to go, you know you know what's great about it, too? We're going to do that live Q&A. And then immediately after the live Q&A, you can go back to your hotel on Saturday afternoon over AW Weekend in Chicago and sit there by yourself and watch the WWE pay-per-view that they're running that same weekend on Saturday. Doesn't that sound is that, exciting? Is that technically on the itinerary for everyone who's going to be joining you out there in no. Vegas? No, okay. it's, not on, it's not in Vegas either, dude. Or Nashville, wherever the hell it is. Where is it? Well, it's likely, Chicago? it's likely going to be Chicago. We'll find out we tomorrow. But I'm pretty sure <laughs> it's going to be in Chicago. And then uh, that same They seem weekend, to draw well there, don't they? Uh, Clash of the Clash at the Castle will be taking place Saturday, and AEW All Out will take place on Sunday. Clash at the Castle will be headlined by Roman Reigns against either Drew McIntyre or perhaps Sheamus. What is the official start time, Sheamus. Eastern time, for that? I don't know, but I know it's going to be right after our Q and A. They're going to hold it up for us. So if we sure. run long, yes. No. Hopefully they give you a little bit more time than uh, TBS gave Dynamite last week, where it just cut off at the end. Actually, they gave them extra time. I know, and they still got a cut off at the end. <laughs> uh, the WWE, the ESPYs, Best WWE Moment Award. It started with a bracket of 16. Hmm. I didn't even know that. Now, that, now it's down to four. Should I try and find the bracket of 16? No, no. I'm no. going to. All right. Okay, so here's the, here's the bracket of 16. We had uh, Brock Lesnar wins Men's Royal Rumble versus Bianca. B oh, I, I see what they're doing here. So on our site, they actually put the brackets together. So it was uh, Brock Lesnar wins the Men's Royal Rumble. Bianca Belair wins the Raw Women's title. John Cena returns at Money in the Bank 2021. Ronda Rousey wins the Women's Royal Rumble. WWE welcomes back live crowds. Steve Austin stuns everyone at WrestleMania 38 Night 2. Roman Reigns wins the title at WrestleMania 38. Cody Rhodes returns at WrestleMania 38. Roman Reigns becomes the undisputed... Oh, I see. So he won the other title. I got it. Big E cashes in Money in the Bank to win the WWE title. Miz turns against Logan Paul. Becky Lynch returns at SummerSlam. Undertaker gets inducted into the Hall of Fame. Edge beats Seth Rollins at Hell in a Cell, Crown Jewel 2021. Wee Man body slams Sami Zayn at WrestleMania 38. There we go. Lesnar returns at SummerSlam 2021. 
and Stone Cold Steve Austin returns to the ring at WrestleMania 38 Night 1. <laughs> so that's the original bracket. So it's down to four, okay? It's down to the last four. You ready to hear what the last four are? I am. All right. Cody Rhodes returns at WrestleMania 38. All right. Steve Austin stuns Theory, Vince, and Pat McAfee at WrestleMania 38 Night 2. That would be in my final four. Undertaker inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, I get it. And uh, was this even listed in the first ones I read? Biggie cashes in Money in the Bank? I don't think it was. How'd that get in there? I don't know. Wait a second. Where's, where's Wee Man? Well, Wee Man didn't make the final four, dude. That's what's very sad about that. Nothing yeah, what happened? Biggie, but... well, let me go back to these brackets. We had a, How did someone get in the final four? Maybe he had a bye. Hold on a second. Oh, there it is. Yeah, Big E cashes in Money in the Bank. Against the Miz turns on Logan Paul. Okay, so anyway, it was in there. But the point is, everybody, what do you think is the greatest WWE moment? When I look at all of those, I would, I would say, because I'll remember it for the rest of my life, when Stone Cold stunned everybody at WrestleMania Night 2, including Vince McMahon taking the final worst stunner anyone's ever taken in the storied history of professional wrestling. That would be my vote. Well, you guys can uh, you guys can make your votes. Anyway, back in a moment. We'll talk Raw. Observer Live. What was that if you were watching video? is a classic film. It's a radio show, everybody. There's commercials. I know some of you are young. You don't know what a radio is or commercials. My two-year-old gets angry watching Kokomil, and she goes, What? Another ad? She's already upset about ads. She's two. Well, let's talk about this, uh, this Raw show. Now, the opening segment was very good. Brock Lesnar came out, and uh, everyone loves him. He talked about the match at SummerSlam. Talks about uh, he's going to slaughter Roman Reigns like a hog. And then out comes Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman starts doing this promo. Paul Heyman is doing everything in his power to try to make you care about another Roman Reigns-Brock Lesnar match. And uh, he actually does a line that I'm not going to say on the air. But uh, it involved... Anyway, Lesnar is howling with laughter at this line. And he's about to repeat it when, of all people, Theory comes out. Theory wants to make it clear he's going to cash in against either of these guys. He's very upset at Brock for throwing him off the Elimination Chamber, which, by the way, they showed a bunch of replays, but they don't show the landing because he got thrown off and landed on his feet, and I guess they thought it didn't look dramatic enough. God forbid the guy kill himself. But uh, So they show him flying through the air, and then the screen goes black, and you hear, clang! And you get to use your imagination for what happened. So then Chad Gable and Otis show up, and they jump Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar no-sells it. He destroys both of these guys. Suplexes Chad everywhere. F5's Otis on the announce table. Kills them both. Crowd goes nuts. Heyman's all worried. This was a very good opening segment. And that's that's about where all of the uh, very good stuff ends. We had uh, Damian Priest and Finn Balor and Rey Mysterio and Dominic out there. And Damian Priest and Finn Balor talked and talked and talked and talked. And they're trying to convince Dominic to join the Judgment Day. They also noted that in a couple of weeks, it's Rey Mysterio's 20th anniversary of his WWE career in Madison Square Garden. They're going to celebrate his 20th anniversary. So I think we can all probably figure out what might be happening to Rey on that day. So it led to Finn Balor versus Rey Mysterio. And they had a good match. This was a good match. And Finn Balor ended up pinning him clean in the middle with the coup de grace. They do this, and of course the storyline here is that, hey, look, Dom, your dad is old, and he sucks, and he can't win, so you should go with us. A great way to get over, uh, you know, I should say, I shouldn't say young Ray, but a uh, good way to get over legendary Ray Mysterio for his 20th anniversary coming up in two weeks. I hope producer Dom was actually paying attention to this segment, because if he just overheard that, he's going to have some questions for you when we go to break. Never heard what? The legendary Rey Mysterio? <laughs> what? Sure. No, nothing. Never mind. Go ahead. What'd I say, it, Dom? How, how dare I interrupt you? I didn't, I didn't swear ahead. today. No, I didn't say you. Never mind. 
He's dumb. Everybody on the chat has absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Thank That's you for fine. that interjection that only you I'm out of here. Understood. I'll see you in a couple minutes. I'm gone. Becky Lynch cut a promo. She's standing on top of the announce table. And uh, she's upset that she, uh, whatever, you know, can't get a title shot. She says, I don't care who wins this match tonight. I want the championship match at SummerSlam. So she sits there to do commentary. It is Bianca versus Carmella, a match we have seen before. It is for the women's title. I don't know why, nor do the announcers. This match went 11 minutes. And for about nine minutes, it was much better than their pay-per-view match. But then, this match just keeps going. And it keeps going and going and going. And they're kicking out and kicking out and kicking out. And it just keeps going. It just keeps spinning around. And finally, went on so long I don't remember what happened. Oh, yeah. So they're outside the ring. And uh, Carmella and Bianca are brawling. And Carmella rakes her eyes, which, of course, is illegal. And then she rolls into the ring. And then Bianca's going to roll into the ring. The ref's right there. She's counting. "Eh, Seven, eight. And uh, right then, uh, Becky comes up and starts yelling at Bianca. And they're arguing. And so the ref doesn't say, hey, get out of here, Bianca or Becky or whoever. He just keeps counting. And so, of course, Bianca's counted out. She loses to Carmella. And then, of course, Carmella... Parades around with the title. Corey Graves says that she's the champ. Everyone else says she isn't. This crowd was dead for this segment here. Then we had Miz TV with Ciampa. So first we have a long Miz TV segment. They talk and they talk and they talk. Miz is angry at... Uh, well, actually, he's he's going to give Logan Paul one more chance. Next week, Logan Paul is going to be on the show. He says Logan has one more chance to agree to be his tag team partner. Otherwise, he's going to be in trouble. And uh, they're going on and on and on. AJ Styles interrupts. And there was actually a great line here where uh, Miz somehow, and it's never even explained how, the match that has been signed is Miz and Ciampa versus AJ in a two-on-one handicap match. Who signed this? Why AJ agreed? None of this is made clear. So AJ uh, wants Ezekiel to... uh, or I guess Ezekiel comes out to be his partner. But anyway, some, somewhere in here, Miz, you know, uh, AJ saying, hey, you know, Miz, I see you have to have a friend here to help you out. You can't do this one-on-one. You know what that makes you, Miz? That makes you, and Miz says, don't say it. And AJ says, that makes you. And Miz says, don't say it. So AJ says, that makes you a coward. And Miz goes, Oh, okay. Then Miz, then AJ goes, a coward with tiny balls. Then, of course, Miz is all angry. But Miz totally not caring that he was called a coward. That was a great moment. So anyway, Ezekiel comes out, and uh, now it's going to be a tag match. Miz is angry that it's a tag match, and uh, even though, whatever. So they do this match, and I swear to God, this is the finish. AJ, bear with me here. AJ and The Miz are in the ring in this tag team match. AJ puts him in the calf crusher. Miz is about to tap. Miz's partner in this tag team match breaks up the hold. And the referee calls for the bell. Announcer Corey Graves starts screaming, What was that? Why was that a DQ? What's going on here? What a horrible call. Then they go, Oh, uh, you know, Ciampa can't contain his anger because he's now he's pounding on AJ, even though this is long after the disqualification. Then they start talking about, well, the illegal man. The illegal man? Bro, there was nothing but tag team match on the show. It was one guy breaking up a pin after another. But man, in this match... It was a disqualification. The crowd is booing. Ah. And this whole segment, between all of the talking and the match, 24 minutes. I sat for 24 minutes through all of this to have a disqualification when a, when a tag partner broke up a hold in a tag team match. 
Now I was fuming. We had Alexa Bliss and Asuka versus Dewdrop and Nikki Ash. The whole match is Corey Graves saying, you know, Alexa was a lot better before she just became normal. And then she wins. She pins Nikki Ash with a DDT in the middle of the ring. So we may get spooky Alexa Bliss again. That's what they're teasing. We had a long Usos promo. You got the, the gist of the show yet? Long Usos promo. They go on and on and on. The Street Profits come out. My shoulder wasn't down. They go on and on and on. Who's going to be the referee at SummerSlam? They go on and on and on. Then R-Truth comes out. He wants to be the referee. He's got a ref shirt on. Bunch of comedy, bunch of whatever. And then the Usos so say, hey, can you get that, uh, what do they call him? A joke ass or something like that? They called him something. So this makes Truth so mad that he wants to fight. But then he notes, only if it's three on two. Well, then out comes MVP and Omos. You know how long this has gone, by the way? MVP and Omos come out. So Omos ends up being the third man on the Usos team. So it is the Usos and Omos versus the Street Profits and R-Truth. Anybody want to guess the finish? It is the Usos and Omos against the Street Profits and Truth. What do you think the finish is? Huh? Well, if you guessed Omos pinned Truth, wrong! Omos pinned Dawkins! Dawkins! Clean in the middle of the ring! What? Sweating profusely at this point. All the windows open in this house, they turned the air on. I was dying. It was Seth Rollins' promo, a bunch of laughing. You know how I feel about that laughing. Uh, another cryptic video package. Is it Edge? Is it uh, Bray? Is it the two of them? Is it Alexa? Who knows? And then finally, 10.35 p.m. Time for the main event. Hey, you got 25 minutes for the main event. Well, 10.35, Lashley comes out. Thank God for our front page report for this this, uh, breakdown. 10.35, Lashley comes out. 10.37, Riddle comes out. 10.38, commercial break. 10.43, replay of Riddle giving Rawls an RKO. 10.44, 10.44, Rollins comes out. 10.45, Theory comes out. 10.45, main event finally begins. Main event begins 10.45. We wasted 10 minutes. 10.49, commercial break. Finally, 10.52. Oh, wait, not yet. We got a plug for NXT this week. Finally, at 10.53, the return of the main event. So we got about eight minutes of television time. And uh, Lashley and Riddle beat Rollins and Theory. And uh, Riddle got the win. Bro, I'm out. Back in a moment. Observer Live. Observer.com. Did I mention how much I hated that Raw show? You seemed Did like I you didn't that? like it. No. He... And you know what's funny about it is when they actually did stuff, I liked it. But, dude, they they waste so much time on this show. It is exactly it is exactly what we talked about for years. So what's the ideal length of a show? 90 minutes. If they took out every bit of BS on this show, it'd be a 90-minute show. But my God. And then someone was like, I wish Brian had this much rage for NXT 2.0. Bro, I prefer NXT 2.0 to this show. It's only two hours, so I save an hour of my life watching it. And you know what? Whatever you want to say about NXT, at least they do a segment, and then they go on to the next thing. And then they go on to the next thing. And they keep the show moving. Dude. This is, you know how long three hours is? 180, 180 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Okay. A- when they, when they, it would be one thing if you did like a three hour NXT 2.0. Okay. That's still too long because it's three hours, but at least it would be a three hour show that was three hours long. This is somehow a three hour show that's five hours long. It takes for, it feels like you're watching this show for years because nothing happens for minutes on end and they do this they do this every week that third hour because our our front page who writes this on the front who writes the front page report i'll plug him in a second but the point is they do this every week he, he points it out they always at at uh 10 35 it's time for the main event and and by the way he didn't even put in the commercial before the first entrance at 10 35 from 10 20 to 11 o'clock there's nothing but filler and about eight minutes of wrestling. And you wonder why that third hour dies. 
every time. Brutal. I wonder how much the average fan fast forwards and what they fast forward through because all of the video packages there's so much of that filler and I don't I guess it's working I guess it's something that they have fallen upon that seems to be working for them I just here's a, a ring entrance and then we're gonna go to commercial then we're gonna come back with a video package hyping something that's got to do with WWE shop or this or that to an interview to this then we get back to the ring. It just, it, I am still not used to that kind of flow. I know I'm old. If it's working, I guess I can't say anything. It's just, it's hard as a viewer. I can't believe I'm the only one that, uh, yes, uh, I guess you could stick around for it. But when you have a DVR, I mean, to me, that's like, 10 minutes you could be doing something else checking scores go doing anything else and i wonder when people are watching this on dvr how much their fingers just on the fast forward button until they get to the match itself or somebody that's cutting a promo that they actually like because unfortunately too many of these promos are also just mindless filler especially the backstage ones it's not really pushing anything across no, i don't want to i don't want to add to my complaints but like if we pretend this is real they're absolutely completely incompetent because, dude, they had like no matches for the show. Every single match had to be set up by some angle, some angle where people came out and talked. Other than that, apparently we would have had no matches. If nobody yeah, would have come out to talk, we would have had no matches on the show. And the funny thing is we did the lineup on what day was it? Monday? Monday. Yeah. And then... Later in the afternoon, two of the matches vanished. They stopped advertising. No, it was Sunday. I, I did the lineup Sunday night with Dave. They had three matches. They had three things announced on WWE.com Sunday night. By Monday, they were down to one. They just took out two of the things. It's Brutal. the Muppet Show. It's the Muppet Show. What's going to happen? We don't know. Gonzo's got a plan of everything that's going to happen. Kermit's ready to do it, and then something goes sideways, and this happens or that happens, and that's that's WWE. That's at least Raw. SmackDown's pretty much the same way, but certainly Raw is the – it's a sports entertainment variety show. You might see some wrestling. Who knows? But we got personalities. At least they have a few personalities. I like seeing Dolph Ziggler back. Um, I know <laughs> he's done everything. I he's tired. talk about that. But that's – the thing with Dolph is, at least for what they want Austin Theory to be, he's the right guy to work with. The thing is, this whole time, where has Dolph been? You couldn't have like come up with an idea where he was kind of floating on the side to be brought in here. To It's just out of nowhere. His music hits. He walks out the middle of the match. He sits down. And then he he's now, all of a sudden, he's got a beef with Theory. After the last time we saw him, he had a beef with, who was it? Uh, somebody that was helping out, uh, somebody who was going against the Miz or something like that, him and Bobby Roode. So where's Bobby Roode at? You know what's funny, Mike? <laughs> you know what's, what's funny? That? You know what I thought watching that? what you do? what you think? Well, I'm sure you've said it many times, but I know you've said it before. Uh-huh. Well, look at these WrestleManias. They, they brought back Goldberg. They brought back Brock Lesnar. They brought back this. They brought back yeah. that. You're right. Well, what are they going to do, you said? Who are they going to bring back down the road when these guys can't be brought back anymore? Well, we're getting our answer. Yeah. Dolph Ziggler. Here's Because the literally, though. they brought him back like he was a returning massive star of the past. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler. Well, I mean, here's the thing. You bring Dolph back 10 years at, uh, uh, from now at a WrestleMania? Well, actually, I guess you can do that. There's, they can do anything that they want. They can do anything that they want. But what would be, uh, you know, probably more behoove them more is actually have Dolph Ziggler show up on TV every once in a while, get a win. He doesn't have to be tied into a storyline. He just stays strong. And I just, I don't know. He and Bobby Roode both. You know, why have a tag division with no teams when you have Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode right there? Why are Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode not full-time in NXT? Because we talked about that before several times. Who would have been perfect to go down to NXT 2.0 and be a regular down there and hang out and all that sort of stuff and try to help these guys get better, including guys like Damon Kemp and other guys who have actual amateur pro wrestling backgrounds in the same way that Dolph Ziggler does? But they didn't decide to do that. Hey, let's talk about this great Kali. And we'll do some ratings. Slapping people with that big hand? Great Kali has issued a statement regarding an altercation he had on Monday with toll workers 
in uh, Ludhiana, Punjab, India. A video of the incident was published on social media in which Kali can be seen arguing with several toll workers. According to a translation of the video by the Tribune, one toll worker can be heard asking Kali why he slapped one of the other employees. The video does not show Kali slapping the person, however. You are asked to show your ID card. Show the ID card, the toll employee tells Kali, to which he replies, You are blackmailing me! The employee then says, We are not blackmailing you. Why did you slap him? Show the ID card if you have it. Kali was reportedly traveling from Jalandar in Punjab to Karnal at the time. Kali then took to social media on Tuesday and said, quote, Hello, friends! Yesterday, while going to Karnal, toll tax employee of Phil Hour stopped my car and misbehaved for selfie. When I denied selfie, he ruthlessly passed racist comments, also used bad words. That's all I want to say. Thank you. According to police, neither party has filed a complaint regarding the incident. So that's the latest on the Great Collie. <laughs> What's your take on that, Brian? You ever slap a toll? Uh, no, but these toll, toll workers worker? have a have an issue with. I guess it's not toll necessarily, but construction. It's construction guys. The construction guys have a beef with wrestlers. Well, remember uh, Steiner tried to run that guy over. I think it was Scott Steiner had a beef with the. Uh... With the grounds crew, the, the DOT crew, but even if the DOT was at fault and maybe they were poking the bear with Scott Steiner, I mean, you just can't be driving over people and you just can't be slapping them around, even though... Well, hold on. We don't know if he slapped them around. There's no video of the incident. There is no video of that. There's, there's an there's allegation, the, an accusation. An alle- well, and I mean, look what Kali had said in in response. Look, he was denied, uh, he denied him selfies because they were acting a certain way, and if they did actually hit him with racist comments, I could see a slapping taking place, so I'm not trying to to hit Kali here with this, you know, and hopefully he didn't hit anybody else. And hopefully well, this, this listen, all I'll, goes I'll away. Well, I'll defend old Kali. You ever seen that guy throw one of those overhand chops? He would have slapped this guy. That guy be dead. That's not true. I think that's that evidence. I should, I should be the uh, so attorney. So slow. That thing was Kali. coming so slow. Are you sure about that? He could have tried to get out of the way a little bit because how slow that thing is. I'd argue in just, court. Caught him a little bit. I think Collie's got a good case. The evidence, the video evidence that we have shows that if he would have hit this guy with that chop, that guy would be dead. Number hey, one. Hey, you don't have that video evidence. You just said no, we have the vi- he didn't even no, throw a chop. No. You're not even sure if he threw a chop. Can now you listen you're saying, to me? Are you saying that your client threw a chop, Mr. Alvarez? Can you listen to me? We have video evidence from his long wrestling career mm-hmm. that when he throws that overhand slap chop deal, dudes mm-hmm. are done. Okay. We have no evidence that he threw a chop, slap, whatever. There's no video evidence that he attacked this guy, okay? Right? And if he had, guy probably would be done for. So I think all evidence is that the great Kali is innocent. There's really only one way to answer this and to, to try to fix this whole thing and to try to finish it all off, and that is, of course, a Punjabi prison toll booth match. WWE on A&E, the Legends documentary The Undertaker, 582,000 viewers. Actually, a pretty good number, although it's down a little bit from the eight episodes that aired during the first season. But uh, I'll tell you, one of those 582,000 wasn't Granny. She watched a little bit of it and was bored. (laughs) I don't like him when he's normal, she said. (laughs) She doesn't like Mark Calloway? No, she likes The Undertaker. Big take. Yeah. But uh, st- till today, point one four and eighteen to forty nine, seventeenth on cable Sunday, and then uh, we had the rivals show afterwards. Brett and Sean three sixty eight and a point one zero, which are, uh, and then afterwards uh, Smack Talk, which follows Rivals, where they have some of their talking heads talk about the shows. Point oh seven and two twenty two. So there you go. SmackDown, 2.129 million viewers, down 0.6%. 0.47 and 18 to 49. Did top all English language programming in 18 to 49 and 18 to 34. Rampage, 428,000, down 11.9%. 0.15 and 18 to 49, down 6%. So uh, still the third highest rating in that category since April. But uh, the string that we had there of, of everyone doing great numbers for like a week or two, Seems to be settling back to normal. So we'll see how Dynamite does tonight. Did a million a couple of weeks ago, a little under a million last week. 
We'll see what they do for the show this week. You ever watch anything on A&E? Nope. Never. Not 60 days in, not the first 48, none of that sort of stuff. Bro, I'm watching three hours of Raw. The first thing I'm going to do when I'm done is not go watch more TV. I got enough TV to watch, so no. What other shows does Brian Alvarez watch at all? Do you watch any TV at all? No, I don't. Not a single thing? I watch thing? wrestling, and then I go I go outside. Not even the Weather Channel to see what it's going to be nope. like before you go Who outside? Who watches the Weather Channel? I got an app. Just asking. Just asking. I know That's... you're not a movie guy, not a TV guy. This person here says, in your opinion, since this whole Vince TV or since this whole Vince story broke, was last night's Raw the first show that seemed to be all over the place and completely not make any sense? No! Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. Dude, I, hey, listen. What we had, ironically, was a string of like three or four weeks of pretty decent episodes, okay? But uh, let's not forget, you know, a couple months ago, a couple years ago, 2018, 2019. Uh, things have been way... W- Listen, I hated that show last night, but it was just because it was so, so much of a waste of time. But, like, the actual content of the show, aside from those two finishes, I mean, the wrestlers all worked hard. Some of the matches were good. It wasn't... This is not the bottom of the barrel that we've seen before. Just too much of a waste of time. Back in a moment, Observer Live. WrestlingObserver.com. This person says, Brian, just like to say I saw a video of the supposed incident. It does not look like Kali. He's a far worse worker. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, damn. Io Shirai tweeted today, rumors, does that mean anything? Well, I think she's trying to suggest that the rumors of her having, as Dave noted, one foot out the door are incorrect. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I like the rumors with a barfing face that she tweeted out there. So Yeah, she doesn't like rumors. Nah. Let's see. If you had to guess, do you see AW All Out at the usual Now Arena or bring it to the United Center or bigger capacity or maybe do a baseball stadium in Chicago? Well, they got a stadium uh, coming up shortly thereafter. Uh, they're doing Arthur Ashe again. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. But uh, I, w- I would expect I-, I shouldn't say anything. I have no idea what they're going to do. And it probably depends on, you know, what kind of match. It, it probably will end up being Punk versus... Uh, Moxley <clears throat> to unify the titles. And I guess they they can make a decision how big a match they feel that's going to be. So uh, we're going to find out on Wednesday one way or the other because they're going to make the announcement on Dynamite. So uh, when that happens, we'll talk about it on Thursday. And tomorrow, Mike gets to talk about NXT 2.0. I Thanks am sad every yeah. time I miss a Wednesday because mm-hmm. I do like talking about it. But at Things least I can do about it on scheduled a lot for Wednesdays now, aren't they? Well, that's what happens, dude. I got kids, bruh. So we're going to wrap it up. I want to thank Mike, as always, callers and listeners over the studio, all my friends and coworkers, the Romans and the countrymen who lend me their ears each day. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.